Welcome back to R Cyber. I'm Mike Redman here helping you get through the certification exams that you need to get to the next level. If you're new here, consider subscribing, hit the bell notification so you don't miss a single episode. We're working through this CISSP exam, Domain 4, Network Security and Communications. We've made it to probably the section of the exam that most people have the hardest time with, dealing with IPsec, RADIUS, and Kerberos. Many of the materials that you're going to read really do make it much more difficult than it really needs to be. So let's break them down one at a time, nice and easy, to help you get past this section of the exam. Starting with IPsec. To deal with IPsec, it really is a simple concept. I want you to think of a cross-country trip. Your data is nothing more than a truck getting from, let's say, Los Angeles to New York. You need to figure out how to get that truck from the West Coast to the East Coast. Along the way, you're going to travel the highways and byways. You're going to need to know the rules of the road. You're going to need to follow the laws. That is how IPsec works. So starting with knowing the rules of the road, how do we know what a dotted yellow line means, or a solid yellow line, or a stop sign? It's all contained in the law book. The law book for IPsec is called the Security Association Database. It's simply the rules of the road. It's the highway that you're going to put your data on. Next, let's deal with your data itself. The truck moving from California to New York. Now, if you picture most trucks, you'll have the front part or the cab, then you have the rear part or the trailer. Usually the trailer is a box that has, I don't know, some advertisement on the side of it. For instance, what if it's a Bud Light truck? It says Bud Light on the side of the trailer, but do you really know that it's Bud Light in the truck? Of course not. It's hidden or obfuscated. We call the trailer of the truck the security encapsulation payload. Now, along the way, most trucks, as they pass from state line to state line, will have to stop at this thing called a way station. It has an RFID sensor in the cab of the truck that the way station is going to read. What is it really saying about that truck? It's saying where the truck started from, where the truck's destination is, approximately how many stops it should have had along the way, what the truck weighed when it started, and what the truck should weigh now. When you think about it, all that way station is, is a router. Your truck is making the next hop along the way towards its final destination. The RFID that it's reading in the cab of the truck is the authentication header. That's how the router knows where to route that packet. Next, we have two decisions to make. When we invoke IPsec, we can either invoke in one of two modes, either transport mode or tunnel mode. The decision is made simply by trust. Do you trust the highway that the truck is on? The easiest way to think about whether or not we can establish trust is, do you own the highway? or do you own the network that the data is traveling? If you own the network, then transport mode is what you need. However, if you don't, then you need to select tunnel mode. Tunnel mode kind of puts an invisibility cloak over the truck so that when it gets to the way station, all it can read is where it came from and where it's going. None of the other information about the, how many stops or how long it's been moving. You just simply want the router to move your packet from one location to the next. That's as difficult as IPsec needs to be. Now you know all the pieces and parts and what they do within the IPsec protocol. Next, we'll deal with RADIUS. RADIUS is about the oldest of the remote access protocols that we deal with. It is the introduction of what we call AAA services. AAA services are simply authentication, authorization, and accounting. The things to remember when it comes to RADIUS is that it's a client-server-based protocol and it uses a shared key. Let's walk through simply how RADIUS works. So let's say that you have a wireless client. That wireless client communicates with a RADIUS client to gain network connectivity. 
Then that client forwards the Radius request to the Radius server. The Radius server will then authenticate the request against the stored accounting information that it has in its database. And then finally, it communicates back to the Radius client to either grant or deny access to the network. You will probably also be asked several questions when it comes to TACX and TACX Plus. It is very similar to Radius, they offer a lot of the same things, however it is indicated that TACX and TACX Plus is a more secure method if you had to decide between the two. For instance, Radius only encrypts the password, where TACX encrypts the password and the username. And with Radius you have AAA services all kind of bundled into one, whereas with TACX it's all separated into three different services to allow for greater flexibility. And then finally, the protocols that each are using, the radius ports are found on UDP 1812 and 1813, whereas the TACX ports are found on TCP port 49. Next, let's deal with Kerberos. Again, this is one of those subjects that a lot of study materials will just over explain. You really just don't need to know as much about Kerberos to pass the the CISSP exam as a lot of the studied materials want to make you believe. Let's break it down simply for you. If you would, think of going to Disneyland. If you've never been to Disneyland or Disney World, uh, it kind of works with you know any, any theme park really, but uh, Disneyland. So I take my little girl to Disneyland, uh, at least we try to get there every other year or so, and one of her favorite rides is Space Mountain. So that's usually the first thing that she wants to do. So in preparation of going to Disneyland, there are certain things that needs to happen. For instance, I need to get tickets to the park. So where do I typically go to get tickets to the park? Well, I need to go to the outside main gate. That outside main gate, or the ticket booth, Booth is what we call the KDC or the Key Distribution Center. Once I have my ticket, it's a very special ticket. The first ticket that I get that allows me entrance into the theme park, it, the reason it's so special is it allows me to get other tickets across the park for other objects. So really, the KDC performed a service for me. That service is identified as the ticket granting service. And that special ticket that it gave me to gain access into the park is what we identify as as the ticket granting ticket. Now, once I have my ticket granting ticket, it will allow me access into the park. The thing to remember is that Disneyland, as much as Ron Eisner would love it to be, is not an infinite space. It has boundaries. The boundaries within a Kerberos environment is what we identify as the realm or the SID or RID. It's simply the boundaries or the domain that the Kerberos environment lives in. So now I, the principal, am going to enter the park and again, my little girl wants to go to Space Mountain. First thing. So one of the most brilliant strokes of genius that I think that the Disney has ever had is the advent of what's called the Fast Pass. Anyone that's been to Disneyland, depending on what time of year, understands you could be in line sometimes up to three or four hours just to get on a single ride. Well, if you're in line, you're not doing the one thing that the mouse needs you to do. You're not spending money. So the fast pass allows you to get out of line and saves your place so that you can go and feed the rat. So what I need to do is I need to go to another ticket booth and then that ticket booth will give me a ticket with a specific time that I can come back and access the object, Space Mountain. If I come back too early, they won't let me back in line. However, if I come back too late, again, they won't let me back in line. Once I arrive back at my appointed time, they allow me back in line, I hand them our ticket, and we gain access to the object. We ride the ride, and then it comes to an end. Now, my little girl usually wants to ride it over and over again. Unfortunately, that's just not the way it works. My time to access the object has expired. So I need to start the process all over again. I need to go back and get another ticket to access the object. So this should tell you something very important about Kerberos. It's all synchronous in nature. Synchronous being based on time. 
The reason we identify Kerberos as one of the more secure methods of accessing an environment is it's not susceptible to replay attacks. Those tickets are going to expire, and if the object doesn't have a proper ticket or a ticket that has not expired, they will not be allowed to access the object. That's as hard as Kerberos needs to be. Well, that's going to do it for Domain 4 of the CISSP exam. Yes, it is a lot to take in, but do it in small chunks, bit by bit, and you will get there. Remember, if you like what you see, be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification so that you don't miss a single episode. And we do now have a Patreon page. If you'd like to support this channel, simply hop over to Patreon and pledge your support. By doing so, you get access to all kinds of little goodies like early access to videos and one-on-one -on -one mentoring with me to study for your exams. Remember, visualize success and you will succeed. I'll see you next time.